good afternoon the esteemed dignitaries and friends of core india institute it's a pleasure to address all of you today uh, for many reasons before i lay out before you the academic uh, approach to legal medicine i could have bought a PowerP brought a powerpoint presentation but i deliberately avoided because i wanted to speak from the heart and also give certain factual information by the way because legal medicine is an area which cannot be covered in 10 minutes to do justice to it i could have put a sketch on powerpoint presentation but that wouldn't install or center stage the significance of legal medicine as of today first of all i consider this day as a historical day for one single reason that for the first time institutionalization of law and medicine's hybrid relationship has been done so i congratulate the founder of this organization and the idea that must have arisen in his mind for very long and precipitated itself to this day dr santosh kakde there is a kind of saying that a vision is a reflection of one's own energy that one puts outside oneself and sees it manifesting i could see the seeds of core india a few years ago in 2007 8 when i roughly landed in pune i must tell you that my very presence in pune is because of a doctor dr rajiv veravdekar whom i met in the course of my employment in a multinational healthcare conglomerate i was heading the hr division and there was an attempt faint attempt to make the corporate to provide a learning avenue for students and thereby train their future employees it was a very futuristic project so that was where dr rajiv veravdekar landed and today i work as part of their team and our relationship has withstood all kinds of tests of time and it was the course of this assignment as the dean of school of law and also as a guide of doctoral program that i met dr kakade in the beginning itself i saw a potential in this person to wed the two disciplines which are otherwise disparate he had come to this research because of a personal pain area of doctors being doubted which was a kind of shaking of the foundation of the medical profession which was built on a fiduciary relationship between the doctor and the patient for every doctor it is unbecoming of oneself because the whole identity of the profession as a profession was to use skill and knowledge for in public service and you are doubted and the doubt comes because of a legal mechanism on the other hand the professionals also had contributed to this doubt which we were trying to explore as a teacher and student as collaborative learners and during that course i wanted to connect to connect him to something that was happening in europe especially in edinburgh where a doctor and a law teacher had come together to edit the first book on medical law and ethics dr kakte took up this challenge he went and participated in the global conference because i was doing my post doctoral study with this team in the edinburgh university and i did not get an opportunity because i took up a corporate job after that then i had to come back and get into this very busy administrative academic administrative role in symbiosis so he became the emissary of this desire to connect the two disciplines but he did full justice and which i see coming manifesting itself today so thanks to the time and thanks to dr kakte for manifesting this vision now coming to the point of doctor and law relationship i see the relationship as a very productive relationship because personally i was forced to take up law although i was all cut out for a medical profession in terms of my academic achievements because of the circumstances in my life but then i did not give up the approach to healing i did not give up the idea of using law to heal the diseases of society as a social engineer and a social doctor but when i was looking at the connection which which was always a matter of curiosity because i grew up watching indian democracy growing with the leadership of doctors in my part of karnataka or country because both the leaders we produced from our region were doctors and i was always wondering why doctors have such a social acceptance and it was very clear that the role that a doctor played in a in a family physician role or in a uh, in a in a kind of practitioner role was more than just 
providing uh, medicines or remedies for diseases. It was more of engagement in a larger community manner. And we see so many starlets or stars today in the form of great luminaries of medical profession in this city. In this great city, how they have contributed to the history of this city. So as a student of law also, my specialization has been international law. I saw that the father of international law, so-called Grotius, was a doctor. And he wrote the first book on how C has to be used and C has to be controlled in such a way that there is no dispute. Often it is doctors who hold the key to tell people that your disputes are affecting your health. So maybe in that way, Grotius assumed the title of being the father of international law. So the relationship between medical profession and legal profession is age old. By 15th century, this relationship became very clear. Now, aside from that, there is also a reality where the medical profession, the way it was working, it was a, it was a kind of uh, ignorance probably in the training of the clinicians that clinical approach in the garb of professionalism and in the garb of uh, you know, what we call as the highest duty of care might have been oblivious to the sense of justice to the sense of fair play, to the sense of uh, uh, unfairness that a patient or an organization or a person might harbor or the community might harbor. So this hybrid relationship between law and medicine became evident as days passed by. It's not that Consumer Protection Act for the first time invented something. It just gave a, gave a kind of different outlook to it by terms of duty and responsibility between doctor and patient being established with the connotation of tort law. Means every injury needs to be addressed with some kind of repairment or reparation. But then the concept existed in the penalization of negligence, but uh, that penalization had to be uh, facilitated only if the expert opinion came in that line and penalization of a professional was very difficult it was not something that could withstand the evidentiary battle in the court of law so converting that into a compensation mechanism was much more easy and then the doctor of the uh, the captain of the ship doctrine in terms of surgical teams or team behavior or team tasks in case of medical profession came to be increasingly replaced with the corporatization and organization of healthcare. So here captain of the ship was no more doctor, but the owner of the ship was going to be bearing the owners. So in this context, the insurance came to indemnify. So there was a lot of complexity being rendered to this profession, which was also changing its color from being so intimate with the patient in the family physician context or personal linkage with the patient kind of context, uh, playing God kind of context or a demigod kind of context to becoming a commercial provider or a service provider in, a, in an elaborate context. So automatically law had to keep pace with it. Elsewhere in the world, this Consumer Protection Act for the first time subjected lawyers into it. But in our country, the first profession, unfortunately, which was to, to be subjected was the medical profession uh, formally. Formally, I'm using the word formally because other professions are also liable if you are able to, um, uh, if you are able to uh, strategize the litigation, bringing it under the act. Now, talking about the need for uh, academic discipline of legal medicine, I would like to posit before you a few academic approaches that India has adopted, or generally in the world and India in particular. In the law schools, healthcare law or medical law or medical law and ethics, which I was talking about in the beginning of this century, by 2004 in Edinburgh, we were looking at that. And by that time, the first book had already been published and the second edition was published by the time Dr. Kakde went there. So uh, by then, the interdisciplinary orientation of medical law and ethics, because Ethical decisions are very hospital centric, they are very profession centric. So those ethical decisions and the circumstances have to be coming from the empirical studies from the profession. Whereas theoretical legal studies or legal principles were all already existing in plenty in the corpus of tort law or in the corpus of criminal law. So we saw that the increasing understanding in the linking of the profession, uh, the two professions came in the name of either medical law or in the name of medical law and ethics or in the name of healthcare law, which looked at public health dimension or the framework of the uh, system of healthcare and the relationship with law. But 
specific body of expertise in the area of how to train doctors in terms of deposition of evidence, how to understand the intricacies of medical profession in terms of their liability within the legal system did not evolve. Even now we do not have a structured corpus of curriculum. So that is where the, the idea that Dr. Kakte shared with me, lot of materials also he brought, became very relevant in terms of legal medicine. Legal medicine is a beautiful way, more meaningful way of incorporating the need for giving legal knowledge to the medical professionals and medical knowledge to the legal professionals. So I was just, uh, uh, you know, uh, I was just... Uh, um, amazed at the way uh, the Nagpur bench of Mumbai High Court gave a decision a couple of weeks ago. You might have read about that decision, most of the doctors. Indrajit Khandekar filed a petition, so motor petition, in front of the Nagpur bench talking about how the mort mortuaries are being converted into abattoirs because of the increased recommendation of postmortem, routine recommendation of postmortem. And he was arguing, he was drawing the attention of the court to uh, declare that such postmortem should not be permitted. There should be a discreet uh, permission for postmortem. The the merits of the case aside, what it was highlighting was he was talking about a mandatory forensic center in every hospital where the experts will be assisting in taking the decision and the ethical committee and the experts of forensics sitting together and making these decisions and he presented that this is going to reduce the uh, time burden on the police, time burden on the judges, time burden on the doctors and he was showing, showing how cost will be saved money will be saved, energy will be saved and it will also result in more effective convictions. On the other hand, we have issues such as, you know, the poor kind of medical input resulting in poor conviction, resulting in failure of the bringing, failure in bringing culprits to the book, especially in domestic violence cases, dowry related violence, dying declaration recording, which is a very crucial evidence as far as criminal law is concerned, or if you are looking at other kinds of crimes, even accident cases, etc. So this is where medical legal knowledge which is given in the medical curriculum for the time being is very, very outdated. They say that the Modi's jurisprudence which is being taught in a routine manner in the medical schools without being sensitive to the reality of complex crimes and the medical doctors being liable, them being called as expert witnesses. I, uh, I would also see that the lack of simulation of reality in the medical college as far as this important aspect of doctor's role is concerned has made the medical curriculum also inadequate. Supreme Court has already pointed out that in 2014 in one of its decision. So in the light of this, my argument is that we need to have a legal medicine course developed right from the basic course to the advanced diploma to the master's program as an interdisciplinary program between two disciplines of healthcare and law. And it is here that the lawyer or the law expert could help in giving the basis of Indian legal system and the basics of all the procedural laws which are applicable in a country and also giving a simulation of how a case is heard, how a trial takes place. And on the other hand, we can have the uh, medical experts talking about such cases and the medical dimensions of these cases, like for example, how the postmortem is done in different kinds of crime scenes. So these could be played before the students uh, as video recordings or if such a thing is being done with the permission, with necessary ethical compliances, students could be taken there. So this program could have both medical graduates or medical students, undergraduate students or postgraduate students or law graduates or law, law postgraduates coming together and learning. Already National Law School has been giving a little diploma. We are looking at providing a course in, the, uh, in our sister uh, faculty in Health Sciences where Dr. Ajeev is the dean. Because of, a, because of a kind of think tank between the two disciplines between us, we were able to develop such a program. I, I think I've got two more minutes, right? So I'll wind up. So uh, it is this idea that also was behind our mind when we were inviting Dr. Kakade to help us with developing such courses. Um, 
I would not like to steal the show from Dr. Kakde because he is the one who underwent an expensive program, training program in the US and brought these materials to us. But I would certainly take credit while guiding his thesis. We were able to thrash out a lot of such issues and he was forced to go to field study. He was forced to take up certain existing cases in the Pune Consumer Forum. He was forced to do the entire survey of National Consumer Forum decisions as far as medical negligence was concerned, which must have driven him to this discipline. Now today, as far as the emblem of or logo of this organization is concerned, that is where I would like to take a pause, that uh, it shows the need for the embed, embedding of the professions, the two professions, which have two different kinds of protocols. And I always tell my students, look at doctors and learn how professionalism is. And on the other hand, now doctors are uh, envyingly looking at lawyers and many students who got admission to medical colleges have chosen to go to national law schools or symbiosis instead because they feel that this is a more powerful profession. This. I mean, even this could be the noblest of the professions. Of course, nobility in law has to be trained now. That is what Harvard and others are looking at. And even symbiosis is now trying to inculcate five ethical courses. Um, of course, our approach to ethics is also learned from the medical school approaches. So this is where our two professions, as Mark Gallanter, this Harvard scholar who motivated Indian lawyers to think in a different way, Indian law professors to think in a different way in the early 60s, Mark Gallanter said, there is a dualism between these two professions. This dualism in terms of fragmentation in legal professions of the sarpanches and us, the black coat lawyers, and the integration in medical profession where even the Ayurvedic doctor tries to adopt to medical protocols. So this dualism, he says, unless this comes to an end, we cannot have the professionalism center stage. I hope that with the initiative of this kind, there is going to be more professionalism which is going to inform the sense of our both professions. And also that instead of consumer forums in this country, we will have separate healthcare tribunals looking at these cases. The discipline of legal medicine will play a crucial role in elevating the justice issues to be taken up as an expert issue in future, only if it is offered as a mandatory curriculum in both the faculties. I wish all the best to this institute and I thank all the luminaries for giving me the opportunity. All the best. Thank you, sir.